Typically, if you're given a matrix like this and you want to find the eigenvalues, the direct approach is to subtract lambda or x from the diagonal entries and compute the determinant of the resulting matrix and find out when that determinant is zero. However, this entry right over here makes this matrix not upper triangular, so it's not straightforward to compute that determinant. There are ways to do that inductively, but it might be cumbersome or not easy to see. Now we're going to see a very clever way to figure out all the eigenvalues of this matrix that doesn't use that at all and instead looks at this interesting cyclical nature of the matrix that we're given. So we're going to start by showing that 2 is an eigenvalue and then we're going to look at how we can recover a lot of the eigenvalues from roots of unity which we'll talk about what those are if you're not familiar with them. So let's start with the fact that 2 is an eigenvalue of this thing. So if we look at the vector that consists of all ones and take it and multiply m by it, what happens? Well, if you multiply any matrix by the all ones vector, the entries are going to be the sum of the rows of your given matrix. And if you notice in this matrix, all the rows add up to two. So if we do this computation explicitly, so here we've written out what this looks like, and these trailing zeros in these early things um, come from these trailing zeros in the actual rows they correspond to, we end up with a vector with all twos. And this vector is exactly twice the original vector we multiplied m by. So that means that the all ones vector is an eigenvector with eigenvalue two. Now, the interesting part about this is not the fact that each row of the matrix m sums to two, but it's also the fact that it has this like interesting cyclical nature where the entries shift by one to the right in each row. And that's gonna give us some intuition about how to find some other eigenvalues. So let's start with omega, which is a primitive seventh root of unity. What does that mean? It means that omega is a complex number whose seventh power is one, but whose powers otherwise, when m is less than seven, is not one. So there are a lot of complex numbers that satisfy this. Actually, there's exactly six of them. And we're going to select any one of them and call it omega. All right, so the key property is the fact that omega to the seventh is one. This is going to be useful in our construction. So what we're going to do is consider this vector right over here that contains all seventh roots of unity. So you notice if you take any one of these numbers and raise it to the seventh, you're going to get one. So for example, omega to the seventh is one. And omega squared to the seventh is actually omega to the 14th, which is the same as omega to the seventh squared, and that gives you one as well. And you can continue with all these other numbers to justify that their seventh power is one. And one can argue that actually all of these have to be different from each other. If any two of them were equal, like let's say omega to the sixth was equal to omega squared, then that would mean that by dividing by omega squared, we get omega to the fourth is one, right? But being primitive means that you don't have a smaller power of omega that's equal to one. So that's not actually going to be the case. Okay, so we have these seven distinct numbers here inside of our vector, and we're gonna multiply by this matrix and we'll see the interesting fact that one plus omega will turn out to be an eigenvalue. So let's do the computation and see why. So here's our matrix that we started off with. And here's our vector that consists of all of these roots of unity that are distinct. Doing the multiplication, we look at the first row times the vector and we pick up a one plus omega. Then if you look at the second row, we'll pick up an omega plus an omega squared. And this will continue because of this shifting nature of the matrix we started with we'll get omega squared plus omega cubed in the next entry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this will seem to stop with our last entry where we'll get a one plus omega to the sixth power, but we notice because omega is a seventh root of unity, this is actually omega to the seventh right over here. So the nature of this pattern that we see where we have a power of omega and then the next power of omega is continued throughout this vector. So if you factor out a common factor of one plus omega, we'll get exactly this here. We'll have omega as a common factor for the second entry, for example, etc. And in this last entry, we'll have a common factor of omega to the sixth, 
because omega to the sixth times one is omega to the sixth, but omega to the sixth times omega is omega to the seventh, which is one. Now we'll take that common factor of one plus omega out and we recover exactly the original vector that we had. So here is an eigenvector whose eigenvalue is one plus omega. And this is a very cool way to find out an eigenvalue using this, again, cyclical nature of this matrix. Okay, so we found two eigenvalues. We found the number two, and then we also found this one plus omega. How do we find other ones? Well, we can play the same game with this vector that contained roots of unity inside of it by raising all of these entries to different powers. So for each k from 0 to 6, we're going to define a vector w sub k, which is going to contain the kth powers of the roots of unity. So we'll have 1, omega to the k, omega to the 2k, etc., up to omega to the 6k. So we've actually seen some of these vectors already. So for example, when k is 0, all of these will be 1s, and this will be the all 1s vector, which we showed had an eigenvalue of 2. And when k is 1, we'll get exactly the vector that we saw in the previous example that contained all of the sixth roots of unity. Okay, so for a general k, what will happen when we multiply this particular vector by the matrix? All right, let's take a look at the computation now. So in the first entry, we'll have 1 times 1 plus 1 times omega to the k. So we'll get 1 plus omega to the k. Now what happens in the second entry? We'll get a contribution of omega to the k and omega to the 2k added, right? And we can factor omega to the k to get one plus omega to the k as a second factor. Now let's do this again. In row three, we'll get omega to the 2k plus omega to the 3k. And here, if we, multi if we factor out omega to the 2k, we get one plus omega to the k. So you notice in each row, we're going to get omega to the k raised to some power, right, multiplied by 1 plus omega to the k. Now we notice we don't have the same thing right over here, but we can actually fix that. So we'll factor out omega to the 6k, we'll get omega to the negative 6k plus 1. Okay, but omega to the negative 6k is the same as omega to the k, because omega to the negative 6 is the same as thing as omega because omega to the seventh is one. So we get this expression right over here and our argument for why we have this equality because of this. So just like we had before, all these entries have a common factor of one plus omega to the K and then a power of omega to the K beside it that matches up exactly with the entries of the original vector WK that we had to begin with. So if you factor out this one plus omega to the k, we get the vector we started with here, and we get one plus omega to the k as an eigenvalue. Okay, so the vector wk has one plus omega to the k as an eigenvalue. And so if we look at the list of eigenvalues we've constructed, we found seven eigenvalues lambda sub k, where lambda sub k is one plus omega to the k for every k between zero and six inclusive. So we started with a seven by seven matrix and we have exactly seven eigenvalues. The issue is maybe it's possible that some of these eigenvalues have repeated. And if we don't have seven distinct eigenvalues, we may for some reason be missing some. But it turns out that's not the case. And the reason is because again, since omega is a primitive seventh root of unity, meaning omega to the seventh is one, but no smaller power of omega is equal to one, all of these values omega to the k for values of k between zero and six are distinct. So we get all of these eigenvalues right over here for the matrix, and that's the entire set of eigenvalues for this interesting matrix 